What's going on everyone? I'm Encore, this is Tomorrow Never Comes. And this is gonna be the finale of this Crypto Basics series. I didn't start out to be a series, it turned out to be one. But if you've seen the last video, kind of showed through a tweet the various levels of crypto investing from a very basic standpoint. The tweet itself was through Bitcoin investing. And so just to keep it simple, level one is you just go on an exchange, you buy your Bitcoin. Level two is you get to hot wallets and you start learning how to transfer from your central exchanges to your hot wallet. And now level three is you're going to go to a cold wallet. Now, why do we need a cold wallet? Or why should you have a cold wallet? Look, at the end of the day, the whole point of having crypto is to own your own assets. So it's not dependent on any third party. There's no, there's no third party who's going to dictate if you can move it, you can't move it freeze your accounts, suspend your account, nothing. The whole point is that you have full control and decide what you want to do with it. If you want to hold it, you hold it. If you want to transfer it somewhere else, you can do that. And there's no issues doing that. Okay. And so also on top of that, if you leave it anywhere, like on a central exchange or a hot wallet, you are susceptible to that platform being hacked and your assets being taken and no crypto exchange, no hot wallet. They're not regulated like banks are where you're, there's some insurance to it i mean some are starting to happen now i'm not too familiar with the amounts and exactly how it works if if your account is hacked and, and crypto assets are taken but for simplicity's sake let's say that doesn't exist at all because you don't know right and so being on a hard wallet a cold wallet as they call it it's it's hardware it's it's like um a different forms of it but the one that i like and i'll talk about is ledger and it's kind of like a USB, and that's in your possession. Nobody can ever access it as long as you're not tied or connected to the internet. Nobody has access to it. Nobody can even get close to it. And in terms of getting into the ledger itself, you'll need passwords and all kinds of stuff and, and recovery keys even just to access it. So the beauty of it is, and I have it right here. Here's a ledger right there. It looks like USB. Okay, it actually opens up. Let me show this for you guys. Okay, it actually opens up like this. It's kind of like, uh, if you guys know, an Allen key. All right, just a, a wider version of it. Okay, so it just kind of opens up. And so it looks like. And um, the point of this is that it's yours. Okay, but also with that comes responsibility. That if anything happens, you blame yourself. There, There is nobody else, no customer support that's going to do that for you. Okay, so this is the ultimate goal of where you want to be for assets you want to hold long term, such as Bitcoin. But also, or ETH, but also even if you want to have assets that you want to be able to freely move around, a lot, what, I, what didn't happen early on that is happening now, central exchanges will insist, and when I say insist, it's mandatory, that there's a 24-hour wait before you can put in a new address to withdraw from. So let's say you need to move something today. Yeah, good luck. You'd put in the address that you want it to go, and they're going to say, well, let's wait 24 hours before you can actually send it to that address. When you have one of these, you're in full control. Doesn't matter. You can do it immediately. All right. So let's just jump right into it and what it is and, and, and why you need it. So again, there are a variety of them. Trezor is one of them. It's a very popular one as well. But this is the one that I use. And so this is the one that I'll discuss. And so as I talked about, like, so what is it? Why do you need it? Okay. So you want to, and here's the thing this is not just a wallet or a vault where you can just only just transfer to and hold on to you can buy crypto from here if i can move myself out of the way so you can buy crypto here you can swap it you can stake it so if you're not familiar with staking is, is you you put it into a pool or you lock it up on a third party and they're going to give you interest on it basically and typically it's in the asset that you that the interest is in the asset that you staked so if you stake ETH, you know, you'll get ETH or a, 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 a you know, a variation of ETH um, without going into too much detail. But or if you, you know, you stake Atom, you're going to get Atom in return on interest. So there is that. And what's interesting now is that you can actually store your NFTs. Again, these are through third party apps. So you, what you want to think about here is that this is the hard wallet. OK, so think of it like uh, it's, it's your phone. Okay, it's your it's a phone, but there is an operating system for this, you know, quote unquote phone, and that's called Ledger Live. All right, so that you can just download 
straight from the site itself. So it says download the app. And what you would do is when you buy Ledger, and so I have the Ledger Nano X, and we'll go over well, the varieties that they have now. They have two right now, uh, Ledger Nano S Plus and Ledger Nano X. And really it's just differences in capability and, and memory. Uh, or basically what you can hold and how many you can hold, how many assets you can hold on here. So you just download the app and then you would connect, you would, you would activate the app and then everything would kind of happen through the app, but it would all reside on here. Okay, so again, like your phone, you have software for your phone, it's gonna allow certain operations to happen, but anything that ultimately is on your phone stays on your phone. So that's gonna be right here, okay? And it comes with a couple of wires here. All right, one is where you would plug straight as a USB from here into your desktop. But there is another one that will plug directly into your into your phone. So there, there is that. And also the Ledger Nano X. So instead of, uh, let's see if we can just do this. So you guys get a good idea. Okay, so Ledger Nano S Plus and Ledger Nano X is uh you know essentially you you can just uh you even have bluetooth in the ledger nano x all right i'm not too familiar when i bought mine i don't think they had the plus at that point it was just the ledger nano s and so there was a big difference in terms of how many assets you could hold from the nano s to the ledger nano x so that's what i have is the ledger nano x all right and it gives you like uh, you can put on a hundred different apps off through that um, onto this actual USB or public ledger here or and um, there's so many different things that you can do with it all right but without getting into nitty-gritty you guys can even read the site here all right you can decide which one works best for you if you're just going to do Bitcoin and ETH you know Ledger Nano S plus is fine you don't need too much memory you don't need too much capacity if you want to hold more do different things with it Ledger Nano X works well okay so you know and and what do we want to do here? So when it says start using your your ledger, download ledger live. So it'll go through right here. Now here's a hot tip. Okay, so this is what a lot of people do is they will go on Amazon and they will order their ledger nano or S or X or whatever it is, or even some other cold wallet. So remember, hardware, hardware uh, cold wallet and uh, cold storage, all all synonymous, okay? So on here, on this cold wallet, a lot of people will go onto Amazon and they'll try and find, they'll try and find the particular cold wallet that they want. And then when they order it, everything looks great. It looks packaged. Everything is nice. But really what has happened is that someone has already purchased that and put in all the, uh, has access to the private keys. They've kind of gone through the process of activating it and they just repackage it and then they put it back on Amazon and that's what you buy. So when you get it, you think it's brand new, but meanwhile, it's actually already been accessed by somebody else who now has access to those private keys. And so the private keys, they're gonna give you cards here, all right? So as you walk through the process, as you activate it, I'm not gonna actually show you uh, the recovery phrase on the other side, but there is 24 uh, words, basically that's all makes up your recovery phrase. And uh, they give you three cards so you can put them in different places in case you ever lose it. You have access to, uh, you know, uh, you have access to more than one card just in case that one card gets lost. And so what happens is these guys will take a card or they'll write down. They won't even take a card. They'll write down what the recovery phase, uh, phrase is, repackage it, send it out. And uh, you don't know that someone else has actually accessed your cold wallet and so when you put your stuff on since they have access to it through the recovery phrases they can actually take all of your all of your crypto assets so that is something to note only come on the actual sites themselves that's what i do just come on the ledger buy it straight through here do not go through a third-party platform all right so that, like i said there's a bunch of things you can do with it you can swap you can buy from here you can hold your nfts you can you can even lend on here so they've integrated a, a different bunch of uh, apps or third parties on their uh, ledger live and you can do a variety of things and not just you know hold your assets and do nothing with them so this is something that is a must okay and the more you go down that rabbit hole of being in crypto and understanding what the whole point of decentralization is you're not going to want to keep your stuff on exchanges literally 
if you keep your assets on an exchange, they own your assets. So they always say, not your keys, not your crypto. And that's exactly what they mean. The keys are the recovery, like the, the private keys to access your, your cold wallet or your wallet. If you don't have access to that, that means somebody else does and essentially they own your assets. Okay, so there's a whole bunch of things that and I'm going to put this. Uh, I'll put this link in the description here of what it is. This is what it kind of looks like, how you fill it out. Now, again, with anything, there is a learning curve. So what's great? They have a Ledger Academy. They've got some videos they can show you. They can walk you through. And what's great as well now, and I hope they continue to do this, is once you purchase to them or subscribe to them, they will send you videos on how to actually go through step by step of how to create an, you know, how to activate your ledger, how to move your assets and all the various features that you can do. OK, but there isn't, you know, there, there are very few assets that are not available for here. Now, if you're going to look at, you know, very speculative ones, those typically aren't on here. But the majority of standard quality, tried, tested and true assets are all available and all accessible on your ledger. OK, so like I said, there's a whole learn. You can subscribe to the newsletters. They have live sessions. They've got a podcast. Beginner's Guide. I mean, they've got everything you could possibly want to understand. Okay. So here it is again. It's your money. Own it. So if you don't have a cold wallet, somebody else owns your assets. Okay. Somebody else can hack your assets. So even hot wallets like we did in, in step two, that can be hacked and you could lose your assets. Once you're on here, you're as safe as you can possibly be and the beauty of it is is you can carry it in your pocket you can go anywhere across any border connected to the internet and you've got access to your to all of your assets and let's say you're like well what if you don't have access to the internet well as long as it's on here you're good okay so it, it's not as if it's not as if it's not as if you if you don't connect to the internet it'll never show up here it is here. It's just, can you see it or not? And at some point, I'm sure you will get access to the internet and you'll be just fine. Okay. So again, I wanted to make sure we covered this. It's a very small, simple device. Let's move myself out of the way. All right. And this will show you really, these are all just mini apps and these mini apps have to do with uh, adding which crypto, right? So it's going to be Bitcoin, ETH, XRP, Doge, there's a bunch of different ones. Doge is on here, even though I said there's no speculative ones, Doge is on there. All right, so there are a few like that. But look, this is the greatest place you want to be. This is the end of being a basic crypto investor. If all you want to do is hodl, this is it. You're done. You never look at the portfolio. You don't look at the price charts. You don't look at anything, right? Until five, 10 years from now or more. That's all you do. You don't have to worry about it. But even still, let's say you want to move around, you want to play around with things. And I do. I, I, buy, I like buying NFTs and doing stuff. This is a great place to be. And before I finish this off, and I'll, I'll give a real practical example. When I was trying to do certain um, transactions, they're trying to get ETH onto my MetaMask um, from an exchange. If I wanted to buy an NFT, if there was a mint happening or something like that where I wanted an instantaneous uh, transaction, that 24-hour rule would hurt me because the wallet address at that time, if I had not put in my MetaMask before, would have got me. Okay, so that, it's, it's again, I'm, I'm relying on another platform to allow access to my own crypto assets. So essentially, the centralized exchange is like a bank. It has to approve your transaction. It, everything has to be in alignment for it to allow the transaction to happen. When your stuff's on here, on this, you can do, you can move things as freely as you like. Okay, so guys, level one is being on an exchange, level one investing. Level two is going from an exchange to a hot wallet. And then level three is going to a cold wallet, holding your assets, being responsible for them and moving on. For me, level four and five then now, it's not about running nodes or getting into crypto mining, although those are great options. The next part is just that you get more involved into the other projects if you so choose and really start to understand the different pieces at play in the crypto space, the metaverse play, the gaming, the NFTs, all of that. That's the next level. OK, so guys, I hope you found value in this video. Like, subscribe, share, hit the notification bell and leave a comment. Do you own a cold wallet? 
have you gone through the hot wallet process already just and if you do own a cold wallet which type do you use so i would love to hear your comments drop them below and just remember tomorrow never comes take action invest in yourself today and i'll see you guys in the next video